question, is yeah. there ever such a thing as putting out too much content? The answer is yes in the micro algorithm game of marketing and no in the branding game of marketing. So I say no. All right. How about, uh, do you, do you, do you think? <laughs> I mean, look, bro, this is a very simple question. The people that are deepest knowledgeable about what's going on in social content will tell you there's certain platforms and certain algorithms that you don't want to put out too much content because it can hurt you. Sure. I tell you, sure, but what happens is you lose certain awareness, but the volume makes up for it. Plus, you might have not put out that one fucking piece of content that changed your life. It's a, it's a massively interesting debate, probably even amongst my own team. I just believe what I believe. I just don't think you can put out a, By the way, there's another thing. It's called your talent on the content. Like if you're a one-trick pony and you're not interesting and you can't bring value, well, how much content can you put out? Which is why document sure. over create became such a big thing for me because it allows people to put out more content than they were putting out. Do you, do you ever think you're burning out people or do you sure. think you're adding yes. more people than you're losing? I think I'm adding more people than I'm losing. And I think I'm burning some people out. Right, which is bound to happen, but the people stick around. I mean, I'm 2,500 videos in on YouTube and micro-contenting everywhere else where we need to be. And the the other thing is... You gotta remember, the other thing is, and this is important, not everybody over, like, if I was a 16-year-old vlogger, like, (laughs) blue-eyed, pretty boy, I'd have seven million fans on YouTube. Like, certain platforms over-indexed. You know, you and I are, are in a demo and have been doing it at a time like, we, you know, we still don't live in a world where a ton of 40, 50, and 60 year olds are consuming YouTube all the time. So you're gonna have your audiences, um, but you know, I, I, I don't, I, I'm worried where you're going with this is, and where, where a lot of people are going with this is, people that have been in the game for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years, you have plateaus. I've had them. And, 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 but it's almost like an actor, right? Like, like John Travolta, Saturday Night Fever or whatever, big star of the late 70s and early 80s, then nothing from 83 to 94, 95, and then Pulp Fiction, back, right? Mickey Rourke, like, like I think of it like, I think of it that way. Like, you, you might just be hot for a year and then cool for, you know, three, and then one piece of content can change everything. Simon Sinek, somebody I've known for a long time, been in the game putting out content for five years. His interview the other day where he shit on millennials, I disagree, uh, went viral as fuck, and now he's here, you know? Like, I mean, you know. Yeah, makes total sense. I'm not stopping anytime soon, but uh, the thi- the thing one. The thing I would tell you, and the thing if you look at my behavior is, Maybe you need to think about other platforms and being really aggressive. Maybe, maybe you would have really, really, really popped in 10 second form on Instagram and, and Vine or Snapchat videos. Like The one thing I would tell you is, is always hardcore taste the other stuff. And I know you do do micro content in other places, but sometimes make, put another flag down, not just on YouTube. What's going on with you and Facebook video? Are you hardcore putting it all there too? I've been hardcore good. on Facebook videos since good. they start putting it up. Good, so, good. Um, I've been part of some of the beta tests that they've been. How about the how about hiring Facebook how about model. hiring an intern who loves photography to transcribe your video and make it into blog form? Yeah, that's uh, I, I transcribe all the most of the videos. We put the transcriptions up on YouTube. We uh, put them all over the place because I hear the transcriptions get traction on YouTube. Though I haven't seen any bump from that yet. Um, how about how about how the about the part that really works on YouTube? How hardcore have you been about collaborations? Uh, collaborations have been difficult at this juncture because There's not a lot of other people to work with on my side. Sure, there uh, is. You need to figure out how to integrate your narrative into other people's shit. Sure, beyond photography makes total sense. No, no, That's only true. beyond photography. That's the punchline. Yeah. Like there's nothing but people like vlogging, like every single vlogger on YouTube is in play for you because photography yeah. plays. Good point. Thank you. Totally good point. Yeah, that's why I do this show. One more? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, are you spending money on YouTube? I was, we've stopped, right? We're kind of, we're so hardcore Instagram and Facebook right now. <laughs> um, so I'm just, but I believe in, in YouTube ads and, and believe there's value in it. But I would collab the fuck out of your life. You should literally email and reach out to every single vlogger on YouTube, which will take you the rest of your life and your children's lives. All right, thank you. You got it, brother. That's really good advice. The collabos really are the game. 
like bring value. He's a photo- and he's an amazing yeah, photographer. Yeah. Go and shoot somebody. You know how many families are vlogging that have tons of people? Email them and say, I want to come on I'll shoot and I'll take photography of your family. You'll have some great family portraits and he'll get 4,000 subscribers and he'll fly to Ohio.